My approach to teaching mathematics is one of a purely participatory environment. I do not stand at the front of the room and lecture for 50 or 75 minutes. In fact, during the course of a one-hour class period, I ask approximately 50 to 75 questions. And those questions are all pivotal questions that assist me in getting the students to think and to develop the formulas necessary to solve real-life problem, problems. For example, the rate of inflation, uh, consumer price index, rate of change, absolute change, relative change. And I tell my students, I say, you'll notice in the syllabus that your grade is 10% participation. That does not mean when I call on you, you're giving the correct answer. In fact, as an instructor, when I ask a question, I actually like wrong answers better than correct answers. For example, when a student gives an incorrect answer, and this is all, you know, in working with the students, they, after a couple of weeks, understand my style. Student gives a wrong answer. I'm not going to correct them. I want another student to say, I believe that answer is incorrect. I believe the answer is. So, what I refer to as the arrow of recitation, when I ask a question, student gives the response. I do not necessarily respond to the student. I'm looking to ask a question, have a student respond, and have another student respond, and perhaps another student respond. Then I might, you know, add, give some input. Excellent answer, Jason. That was awesome. You really have shown me and your classmates that you understand the concepts. So the students feel good about themselves. Another innovation in a math course now, when I was in, at the university, at a university, my weekends for the most part were my own. My friends were all in the library writing papers. As a math major, I never wrote a paper in mathematics. They're now getting this experience of writing in mathematics. They're learning about information literacy, technological literacy, as well as written communication and oral communication. Last week I had the pleasure of grading their initial project, which was a written project. And they had to do an analysis of a newspaper article, a magazine article. Uh, it could be a cartoon. It could have been an advertisement. It could have been two baseball plays or two actors and they had to use quantitative data and Bloom's taxonomy, the six different levels of Bloom's taxonomy, all the way from knowledge to synthesis, comprehension, comprehension understanding, analysis, and synthesis. Credit is probably one of the most important things in their life. Perhaps somewhere behind relationships and good physical and mental health. Although, they will learn that their credit affects everything. Relationships, mental health, and physical health. Number one, credit is good. Debt is good. However, there's such a thing as good debt and bad debt. What is good debt? Good debt is debt that brings likely future value. For example, everybody here right now is engaged in getting a university education. A lot of, a lot of our students take out student loans. That's an investment in their future. Hopefully, it's a uh, it's debt at a low interest rate, and we know studies indicate that a, a worker with a university education makes approximately a million dollars uh, in their lifetime than a, a worker without a university education. So an investment 
of perhaps $100,000 will bring an excellent rate of return. Real estate, real estate traditionally uh, was, a, it was and still is a good investment. In fact, probably one of the best times to buy real estate is now. Except for one thing, it might be a little difficult to get the necessary credit to make the purchase. Uh, then there's bad debt. It is so tempting to walk into Brandsmark and buy that 57-inch sharp Aquos high-definition television for $3,588.88. Wow, the payments are only $72.55 per month. But if you read the fine print, you'll see that after a certain number of years, you probably have paid over $7,000 for that television. In fact, when you finish paying for it, the television is no longer useful. From what I've received from the students, they're excited about the new curriculum. They're very excited about quantitative reasoning. They see the application to the real world, to their personal lives, as well as their careers. For example, inflation. We looked at the rate of inflation from 1974 to the present time. Calculating the rate of inflation, you need to find the consumer price index way back, 1974, to the consumer price index today. We calculated the consumer price index in class to be approximately 400%. Then I shared with them salaries and I shared with them from a personal uh, perspective my entry level salary of $8,000 and how that compares to, to today's entry level salary for a Lynn graduate of approximately $40,000. Well, they were shocked to learn that the salaries of $8,000 and $40,000 are almost identical considering a 400% inflation rate. 400% inflation rate means that the salary that I earned 35 years ago is today five times that. 400%, which is $32,000, plus my original $8,000, comes to $40,000. And then what we looked at is we looked at different commodities, different items. The price of gasoline. Is the current price of gasoline, has it kept up with inflation? Has it passed inflation? What should the price of gasoline be today if it kept up with inflation back in 1973, and they calculated $1.50. So we're anxiously awaiting the price of gasoline to go down to $1.50 so that they can pay the same price that I paid 35 years ago.